Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Yeah, trying that one out. Didn't sound too good. Uh, it is time for more payoff pitch legends and busts baseball. Uh, it's opening day, and it's our last opening day of the season that I've set up. I'm going to show you my breakdown of divisions one more time in case you've missed it. Uh, don't forget, I also have a payoff pitch playlist where I'm archiving all my payoff pitch stuff. Check that out on my channel as well. In the description for this video is the Sideline Strategies website link where you can find all the payoff pitch stuff, including legends and busts. Uh, which I have on my tabletop, and I'm having a great time with it. Uh, just a blast. Putting teams together, the strategy, putting things on. I don't know. Great time. Loving the creative part of it. Uh, today we are at Rick Wood Field, where our Field of Dreams game was for MLB this year. Um, where my all-time Brewers, that's Team 14 in the league, uh, the last team, I needed an even number of teams. So the Brewers are coming a calling to the team of the 1920s decade, All-Stars and Bus. Uh, so we got the Brewers, we got the 20s. This is going to be interesting. And we got Rickwood Field. And while it's not the easiest park to hit one out of, it's not big. Let's leave it at that. The pitching matchup today is fantastic. Uh, we have Ted Higuera on the mound for the crew against Walter Johnson for the 1920s. I can't wait to get started. Let's take a look at the uh, starting lineups and batting orders. And don't forget to check out channel membership. That link is in the description as well. With channel membership, you get access to members-only videos, discounts on my secondary store, and a free gift every month, usually more than one. Uh, so, with all that said, let's play some Payoff Pitch Baseball. Here are the divisions I've set up. The old division as the 20s decade, 30s and 40s have a combined team, 50s, 60s, then I broke the 70s into American League and National League teams. The 80s, I did the same thing, except I put the National League in the new division. 90s, broken up into American and National. 2000s, into American and National. I have Team Recent, which covers about 2011 to today, and the all-time Brewers. Seven teams per division. 30-man rosters. We are using the DH. I am playing injuries. And every series is three games. All right, here we go for the all-time Brewers. Paul Molitor leads off at second, at third base. Sorry, at third base. Robin Yount bats second at short. Cecil Cooper bats third at first base. Ryan Braun cleans up. He's the DH. Jeff Jenkins bats fifth. He's in left field. Jeremy Burnett bats sixth. He's in right. Ted Simmons bats seventh. He'll catch. Gorman Thomas bats eighth, he's in center. And Mark Loretta bats ninth, he'll play second base. On the mound, it's Ted Higuera, 1986. He was 20 and 11 with a 2.79 earned run average. For the 20s, Rogers Hornsby leads off at second base. George Sisler bats second at first. Babe Ruth bats third in right field. Gabby Hartnett cleans up and catches. Riggs Stevenson. The DH, he'll bat fifth. Tony Lazeri bat sixth. He's playing third base. Ken Williams bats seventh. He's in center. Goose Goslin bats eighth. He's in left. And Rabbit Marinville bats ninth. He'll play short. On the mound, it's the big train. Walter Johnson, 16 and 11 with a 2.17 on this card. We are ready to go. The 20s are an interesting team. Uh... Not a lot of right-handed hitting, so Higuera may have a little bit of an advantage. Oh, and here's Rickwood Field. Uh, wheelhouse on 51 for lefties and 47 for righties. 
Again, not the smallest park out of these 16. Uh, but, you know, not uh, the, a very big one either. You can hit one out of here. So Molitor stands in against Walter Johnson and the delivery, and we are underway in this one. Molitor swings and lifts one to left. That's Goose Goslin country, and he puts it away for out number one, and we're underway. Legends and busts. Here's Rockin' Robin. The delivery by the big train. And Yount strikes out. Walter Johnson blows the gas by him, and there's two down. Now it's Cecil Cooper. Johnson kicks and deals. And Cooper swings. He hits one on the ground to third. That's Tony Lazeri, a little bit out of position. To his left, gloves it, and fires to George Sisler for out number three. It's a 1-2-3 first inning for the big train. We go to the bottom of one, Brewers nothing, and the 20s coming to bat. Ted Higuera will face Hornsby, Sisler, and Ruth coming up in the uh, bottom of the first. Higuera winds and deals. And Hornsby with a base hit. This goes to left and drops in front of Jeff Jenkins, the leadoff man aboard for the 20s. Here's George Sisler. Higuera, the stretch, the pitch to Sis. Is a base hit for George Sisler. This goes into left field, drops in front of Jenkins. Hornsby's going to stop at second. Two on, nobody out, and here's the Bambino. Babe Ruth, Milwaukee is looking for a double play here. Higuera, the stretch, and the pitch to Ruth is swung on and hit in the air to right. High, but not deep. Jeremy Burnitz is under it. He's got it for out number one. Hornsby is going to tag up and go to third base. There are 20s at the corners now for Gabby Hartnett. The Brewers are going to play the infield at double play depth all the way around. Higuera the stretch and the delivery. That is swung on by Gabby and a comebacker to Teddy. He gloves it and turns and fires to Yount for one. The relay to Cooper is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing, and inning-ending 1-6-3 double play. Higuera pitches out of the jam. We go to the second. No score at Rick Wood Field. And Walter Johnson will face Braun Jenkins and Burnett's in inning number two. The wind-up and the delivery by Walter Johnson and a base hit for Ryan Braun goes to center field. A 64 hopper out to Ken Williams, who gets it back in in good shape, and that'll bring up Jenks. Jeff Jenkins at the plate. Johnson the stretch, the pitch to him. Swung on by Jenkins, it's hit to third. That's Lazari. Tony goes to Hornsby for one, and the relay to Sisler is in time for a rally killing, soul crushing, and around the horn, 5-4-3 double play. Turned by the 20s, that's two down, and now Burnett's. Simmons would be next. The delivery by Johnson to Bernie is going to be strike three swinging. Burnett's was going for the downs, and he came up empty. That will end the Brewers' second inning. We go to the bottom of two. Brewers nothing, and the 1920s nothing. Stevenson, Lazari, and Ken Williams coming up. In the bottom of the second, Ted Higuera kicks and delivers to the DH of the 20s. And this will be a ballpark check. And Rig Stevenson, he's got a hanger. This is ripped by Stevenson. It goes into center field, into right center field. Gorman Thomas cuts it off before it gets by him. Rig Stevenson holds on with a long single. And here's Tony Lazari. Double play depth for the Brewer infield. Higuera the stretch and the delivery to push him up is going to be a ground ball hit to Yount at short. Robin gloves it and flips to Loretta for one. A hard slide by Riggs Stevenson breaks up two. Lazari is safe on the fielder's choice. 
One on with one out for Ken Williams. Little bit out of position in center field. We'll see if that comes into play. Higuera the stretch and the delivery. And Williams will hit one to left. This is into left center. Jenkins on the run makes the catch for out number two. Lazari hits the brakes and heads back to first. And now it's Goose Goslin. Higuera the stretch. The pitch to Goose is swung on. It is hit to second. That's Mark Loretta to his left. He gloves it and throws to Cecil Cooper for out number three. Higuera works out of it in the second. We go to the third. Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Walter Johnson will face the bottom third of the Brewer order. Simmons, Thomas, and Loretta in inning number three. The wind and the delivery by the big train. And hey, struck out Simmons. That is strikeout number three with the cheese. Coming up now, it's Gorman. The wind-up by Johnson and the delivery to Gorman Thomas is swung on and hit in the air to right. Can of corn for Babe Ruth. He's got it for out number two. Mark Loretta comes to the plate. Two outs, nobody on. Johnson deals. And Mark Loretta strikes out. Number four for the big train. And a one, two, three, third inning. We go to the bottom of three. Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Ted Higuera will face the 9-1-2 hitters in the 1920s order. Rabbit Marinville, Rogers Hornsby, and George Sisler. Higuera kicks and delivers. Swung on by Marinville. It's a ground ball to Yount at short. Robin charges. Throws on the run to Cooper. And there's one out. Rogers Hornsby up there now. He's one for one. Higuera winds and deals. We'll have our first defense check. It is an error check for Paul Molitor. His error number is a three. And he boots it. Uh, and then he throws it away. It's a two base error for Molitor. That'll send Hornsby to second. And the potential first run of the game is in scoring position. George Sisler at the plate. It's a lefty-lefty matchup. Babe Ruth on deck. Higuera the stretch and the pitch to Sisler. Is a ground ball pulled to first. Cooper gloves it and steps on the bag. Unassisted for out number two. Advancing to third is Hornsby. Babe Ruth up there now. They could walk him. Gabby Hartnett is not a treat, however, and he is in the on-deck circle. Let's see what they do. Higuera the stretch, the delivery to the Babe. He is not walking him, and he is striking him out. Ted Higuera with his first strikeout, and he needed it. He blows it by the Babe. And that will end the third inning for the 1920s. We go to the fourth. It's the Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Top of the order coming for the crew. Molitor, Yountain, Cooper. The wind up by Johnson and the delivery. And hey, strikes out Molitor with the gas. Five strikeouts now for Johnson in three and a third innings. Here's Robin. The wind and the delivery by Walter Johnson is swung on by Robin and hit to left. Over by the foul line is Goose Goslin. He's got it for out number two. Cecil Cooper comes up now with nobody on base. The pitch by Johnson. And we'll have another defense check. This is an error check for shortstop Rabbit Marinville. He is a three and Marinville will make the play to Sisler for out number three. Another one, two, three inning for Walter Johnson. He has now retired eight in a row. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Johnson and Higuera locked up in a good one. Hartnett, Stevenson, and Lazari coming up in the 20s fourth inning. Higuera winds and deals. And hey, struck out Hartnett, number two for Teddy. 
One gone in the bottom of the fourth. Riggs Stevenson strolls to the plate. He's one for one. Higuera deals to him. And this is swung on by Riggs. And it will be a ground ball to second. Loretta on one hop takes it and throws to Cooper for out number two. Tony Lazari comes to the plate. He's 0 for 1. Higuera winds and delivers. And Lazari with a base hit to center. It drops in front of Gorman Thomas. A two-out single for the 1920s brings up Ken Williams. Double play, or no, normal depth for the Brewers with two outs. The stretch by Higuera and the delivery to Williams. Is swung on by Williams. And a ground ball to Loretta at second. He throws to Cooper. And the 20s are done in the fourth. We go to the fifth. Brewers nothing. And the 20s nothing. Walter Johnson will face Braun, Jeffries, and Burnett's in the Brewers fifth inning. The wind up by Johnson. And the delivery to Braun. Is strike three swinging. He got him with the broccoli. Cauliflower, medley, gas. One down in the fifth. Here's Jenkins. He hit into a double play in the second. The pitch by Johnson. Hey, struck out Jenkins. Seven strikeouts now for Johnson. And Burnitz comes to the plate. He struck out back in the second. The big train winds and delivers. Swung on by Burnitz. It's a ground ball to short. Marinville gloves it and fires to Sisler for out number three. That retires the crew in the top of the fifth. And that is 11 in a row, retired by Walter Johnson. Only one Brewer has reached base. That was Braun on a single in the second. We're halfway through this one and we've decided nothing. Your score is Milwaukee nothing and the 20s nothing. Goslin, Marinville, and Hornsby, 8-9-1 for the 20s coming up in the bottom of the fifth. Teddy Higuera kicks and delivers. Swung on by Goslin and a fly ball to center. Back a few steps is Gorman Thomas. He's got it for out number one. Rabbit Marinville up there now. He's 0 for 1. Higuera's only allowed four singles. That's it. The wind and the delivery by Higuera. And this is swung on by Marinville. Rabbit with a base hit. Goes to right field. He took Higuera the other way. Burnitz collects it and gets it back in. One on, one out for the 20s in the bottom of the fifth. Higuera the stretch, the delivery to Hornsby. And Rogers hits it to third. That is Molitor. Pauly goes to Loretta for one, and that's all he's going to get. Hornsby beats the rap at first. Two outs now, and Sisler comes to the plate. Babe Ruth would be next. Higuera the stretch, the pitch to George Sisler. And hey, struck him out. Higuera humped up on that fastball. He wanted no part of the Babe with runners on base. We go to the sixth. And your score is the Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Walter Johnson will face the bottom third of the Brewers order. It's Simmons, Thomas, and Loretta in inning number six. Walter Johnson winds and deals to the Hall of Fame catcher, Ted Simmons. And he uh, draws a walk. Simba goes down to first base. First walk issued by Johnson. Only the second Brewer base runner, and here's Gorman Thomas. Gorman flew out to right back in the third. Johnson the stretch, the delivery. Simmons not going anywhere. And I struck out Gorman. He made him look sick. That is strikeout number eight for the big train. Brings up Loretta with one out and one on. The stretch by Johnson, the delivery to low is swung on and hit to right, dying quail. Here comes Babe Ruth. He puts down the hot dog and makes the catch for out number two. Simmons holds on at first base, and here's Molitor. Robin Yount would be next. Johnson the stretch. The pitch to Molitor is going to be... 
Uh, a ground ball hit to third. That's Lazari. He's going to go the short way to Hornsby, covering second. And the Brewers are done in the sixth. They get a base runner, but can't do anything with him. We go to the bottom of the six, and it's the Brewers nothing and the 20s nothing. Higuera and Johnson matching each other so far. Ruth Hartnett and Stevenson, the meat of the 20s order, coming up in the bottom of the sixth. Teddy Higuera winds and deals to the Bambino. And it's drilled by Ruth, and it's going to get into that right field corner on a hop. Burnitz has to go dig it out of there. Ruth around first, cruises into second with a leadoff double in the sixth. Gabby Hartnett comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Higuera the stretch checks the babe at second and delivers to the 20s catcher. And we'll have a defense check. This is an error check for Loretta at second. Mark Loretta's error number is a 4. We've got a 54. He's going to make the play. Let's see what this is. Uh, it's a ground ball. Let's see if Loretta can turn it. He goes, no, he can't because there's not a force play. Loretta's going to make the play to Cooper for the out. Babe Ruth goes to third base on the play. So there's a man at third with one out now for Riggs Stevenson. The Brewers are going to bring the infield in at all four spots. Uh, Stevenson is one for two. Lazari on deck. The stretch by Higuera. He checks Ruth at third and the delivery home. And he walks Riggs Stevenson. Well, first and third now. One out, bottom of the six of a scoreless game. Lazari is going to come to the plate. And they are going to play in at the corners and back up. Eh, he's only a six. They're going to play in everywhere. In at all four spots. The stretch by Higuera and the pitch to Tony. And Lazari hits one in the air to center. Gorman Thomas is under it. He is going to make the catch. Uh, but it's not going to be deep enough for Babe Ruth to come home. Two outs. Ken Williams comes to the plate. Ruth at third, Stevenson at first. The stretch by Higuera and the delivery to the 0 for 2, Ken Williams. And Williams swings and hits a ground ball to Cooper at first. Cooper gloves it to his right. He feeds Higuera covering. And that will retire the side. Higuera pitches out of a sixth inning trouble spot. Wow, we are still scoreless. We go to the seventh. Walter Johnson will face the two, three, four hitters, Robin Yount, Cecil Cooper, and Ryan Braun in a scoreless game. Johnson kicks and deals. And Johnson strikes out Yount for strikeout number nine. Robin couldn't catch up to the heater. One down in the seventh. Now it's Cooper. Johnson kicks and delivers to Cecil, and a base hit for Cooper. His first hit of the day, the second for the Brewers. They have a base runner. Now it's going to be Braun. Johnson, the stretch, checks Cooper at first, and the delivery home to the Brewer DH is going to be ripped by Braun into left center, and it's going to one-hop the wall. Running it down is Ken Williams. Cecil Cooper around third. Uh, he will be... Well, let's see. Yeah, they're going to wave him. They are going to wave him. So let's see what happens here. Cooper's running. He is a seven. Ken Williams' arm is a six in center field. They are waving Cooper. The throw goes from Williams to Hornsby and home to Hartnett. And they got him at the plate.
Um, yeah, a double for Braun and Cooper throwing out eight to four to two, and that will advance Braun to third. Cooper gunned down, trying to score from first base. Here's Jeff Jenkins. Braun at third. Two men out, though. They need a clutch hit to get on the board. Johnson the stretch. The delivery to Jenkins. And Jenkins with a base hit. That's going to score Braun. It's 1-0 Milwaukee. Jeff Jenkins fought it off into left field and dumped it in front of Goose Goslin. Braun trots home. It's 1-0 Milwaukee with two outs in the seventh. Now it's Burnett's stirring in the 20s bullpen. But nobody throwing yet. Bernie is 0 for 2. Johnson the stretch and the delivery to him. And we have a rare play check with a tough result and a runner on base. All right, let's see what we get here. It's a batter strikes out on a great pitch, but the catcher drops the ball. Uh, but first base is occupied, so that's it. All right. Strikeout number 10 for Johnson ends the uh, seventh inning, and the Brewers settle for one run on three hits. They leave a man. It's time to stretch them out at Rickwood Field with your score. Oh, wait a minute. There were two outs. Wait a minute. D6. If equal or less than the catcher's E rating, the catcher makes the throw to secure the out. The catcher is Gabby Hartnett, and his E rating is a four. It is not less than that. He throws wildly, allowing the batter to reach base. And all runners advance two bases. So it's going to be an E2. And uh, a run rating of seven or better goes to second base. And that will send Jenkins to third. Burnitz is, let's see, is Burnitz a seven or better? Uh, no, he's not. He's a six. So it's first and third. Bernie's on. The inning continues. First and third, two outs. Simmons comes to the plate. A dangerous clutch hitter for these Brewers. Uh, and Gorman Thomas would be next. Walter Johnson trying to get out of the seventh. It's Jenkins at third, Burnitz at first. That one didn't feel right. Yeah, I had to go back and figure that out. Okay, Simmons 0 for 1. Johnson the stretch. The pitch to Simba is a base hit for Simmons. That will score Jenkins. Burnitz... Uh, we'll stop at second, and it's 2 nothing Brewers. Johnson still can't get out of the inning, and now there is action going in the bullpen. It's Carl Mays, who I think we can, I don't know, can we call him a bust? Pretty good pitcher for a bust. Uh, but he is working in that bullpen in a hurry. Here's Gorman Thomas. Two are on. Burnett's at second. Simmons at first. We're in the top of the seventh. Johnson, the stretch, the delivery to Gorman. Swung on by Gorman, it's popped up. This wouldn't be a home run in a phone booth. Under it is Tony Lazari. He's got it for out number three. But in the seventh, the Brewers get two, not one. On four hits, they leave two. Uh, we go to the bottom of the seventh time to stretch them out for real at Rickwood Field with your score, Milwaukee two and the 20s nothing. And now Ted Higuera is in the driver's seat. 
Goslin, Marinville in the top of the order with Hornsby coming up for the 20s in the bottom of the 7th. The wind-up and the delivery by Ted Higuera is a hanger to Goslin. Let's see if the goose can make trouble. He rips it into the left center field gap going up. Oh, Gorman Thomas cuts it off before it gets to the track. But Goose Goslin's around first and into second with a leadoff double in the seventh. Now it's Marinville. The Brewer bullpen is going to get going. Uh, that is Dan Plesak and Francisco Rodriguez. Lefty ready, double barreled action for the Brewers. All right, Marinville's up there now. He's one for two. The stretch by Higuera and the pitch to Rabbit is going to be swung on and hit to center, but not deep. Gorman Thomas is going to make the catch for out number one. And Goslin will hold at second. Now it's Hornsby. Higuera, the stretch, the delivery to Rogers Hornsby is a base hit for Hornsby. This will go into left field, charging hard as Jenkins. Can't really get thrown out at the plate. Goslin is going to hold on at third. Uh, Hornsby is on at first. There's 20s at the corners for Sisler. George Sisler is one for three. Babe Ruth is on deck. The Brewers are going to play their infield at double play depth. They don't care about Goslin. One for three is Sisler. The stretch by Higuera and the pitch home. And this is swung on by George Sisler. And he pops it up into foul territory. Ted Simmons off with the mask and makes the catch for out number two. Ooh, that's a big one. And here is Babe Ruth. He represents the potential go-ahead run. Higuera the stretch. The pitch to the one for three Bambino. And he walked him. The bases are loaded. Higuera pitching carefully to the Bambino. Here's Gabby Hartnett. Bases loaded. Two outs. K-Rod is ready in the bullpen if they want to go to him. But they're going to let Higuera keep going here. Try and pitch out of the bases loaded two-out jam in the seventh. Higuera the stretch. The pitch to Gabby. And we have a defense check. This will be an error check for Bernie in right field. Coming on is Bernitz. Is he going to hang on to the fly ball? It's a E. He's a three. And that will be caught by Burnitz for out number three. The 20s, strand three. Higuera strolls off the mound. And we go to the eighth inning with your score. The Brewers two and the 20s nothing. Coming up for Milwaukee in the eighth. It's Loretta, Molitor, and Yount. 9-1-2 against Walter Johnson. The wind-up and the delivery by the big train. And we have a rare play check. This is a patient result with nobody on base. Um, here we are. And we roll them. 26 is going to be an umpire calls a borderline pitch a strike and rings up the batter. He argues the call, and Loretta gets thrown out of the game. Home plate umpire Ray Charles did not like the back talk from Mark Loretta. That's strikeout number 11 for Walter Johnson, and Loretta gets booted. All right, so Lowe is gone. Going to need a new second baseman, but right now it's Molitor. Johnson kicks and deals. Swung on, it's hit to left. That is Goose Goslin. He's got it for out number two. And now it's Rockin' Robin. Robin is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. The wind and the delivery by Johnson is uh, swung on by Robin. And that will be a ground ball to third. Lazari gloves it by the third base bag and fires across the diamond to George Sisler for out number three. 
Walter Johnson with a nice recovery inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and your score is Milwaukee 2 and the 20s nothing. Higuera is continuing. We're going to get a new second baseman for Milwaukee, and that's going to be Jim Gantner. And he will bat in Loretta's number nine spot. And that's the only change for Milwaukee. Higuera has allowed eight hits. He has walked two. He has struck out three and made all the pitches he's had to make. Riggs Stevenson, Tony Lazeri, Ken Williams up in the bottom of the eighth. The wind up in the delivery by Higuera is a base hit for Riggs Stevenson to left field. Jeff Jenkins collects it and gets it back in. K-Rod and Plesak are ready in the bullpen for Milwaukee. Here's Lazeri. This may be Higuera's last batter. The stretch by Teddy, the delivery, is ripped by Lazeri and it's trouble. This is going to get down the right or into the alley in center field. Gorman Thomas cuts it off on the warning track. Stevenson stops at third. Lazeri into second with a double. There are the tying runs. And that's going to be all for Ted Higuera in this one. So Higuera goes seven plus innings. And he allows two, four, six, eight, ten base hits. Uh, no runs yet, although Stevenson and Lazeri are his responsibility at second and third. Coming on now is left-hander Dan Plesak. His 1986 season, he was 10 and 7 with a 2.97 ERA, and he's on to face Ken Williams. The infield is back for Milwaukee. They're looking for outs here. Uh, Raleigh Fingers is now throwing alongside Francisco Rodriguez in the bullpen. The stretch by Plesak and the delivery. He needs a strikeout here or a pop up. The uh, the pitch is swung on by Williams and it's hit in the air to center. Gorman Thomas is there. He's going to make the catch. Riggs Stevenson will trot home with the first run of the game for the 20s. It is 2 to 1 Milwaukee. Now it's Lazare or now it's Goslin with Lazare at second. Please sack the stretch. The pitch to the left-handed hitting Goose Goslin is swung on and hit to second. This is Gantner. He gloves it and throws to Cooper for out number two as Lazeri advances to third on the play. Rabbit Marinville is due, and we're going to get a pinch hitter for him right now. That's going to be the only right-handed hitter they've got left on the bench, and that's Frankie Frisch. So Frisch is going to bat for Marinville. And there are two outs and a man at third, the tying run at third base. Now, does Milwaukee go to the bullpen? And I think they do. That's going to do it for Plesek. Raleigh Fingers is coming on. And the 20s might go back to the bench here as well. Plesek done after two-thirds of an inning. Nothing on his ledger. Fingers is going to work for a four-out save here. He was the MVP and Cy Young Award winner in 1981. 6-3 with a 104 earned run average. And we are indeed going to get someone off the bench for the 20s. And that is going to be... That is going to be Paul Wehner. So Wehner comes to the plate needing to deliver a clutch base hit to tie this game for his team. Lazaria third, there's two outs. Raleigh Fingers going to go from the windup and deliver to Wainer. This is a defense check, and it's trouble. This is a range check for Burnitz in right field, and this will drop for a hit. 
Uh, and extra bases. It bounces away from Burnett's. Lazari scores. Wainer's got a double, and we're tied at two. Now it's Hornsby with a chance to drive in Wainer with the go-ahead run. All right, the stretch by fingers, the delivery to Rogers Hornsby, who's two for four. And fingers hangs one to Hornsby, who rips it down the left field line. Jenkins has to go get it in the corner. Around third and coming home is Wainer. Hornsby into second with a double. 20s lead at 3-2. Now Sisler. Ruth on deck. The stretch by Fingers. The delivery to Sisler is swung on by Sisler and hit in the air to center. Can of corn for Gorman Thomas. He's got it for out number three, but the damage is done and the lead is gone. The 20s get Three runs on four hits. They leave one. We go to the ninth inning with your score. The 20s three and the Brewers two. George Grantham, the Pirates second baseman, comes into the game in the nine spot where Marinville was. He's going to play second. Hornsby's going to move over to short. And those are the changes for the 20s. Walter Johnson's going to try and finish the deal here. But to do it, he has to wander through the minefield that is the meat of the Brewer order. Cooper, Braun, and Jenkins. The Brewers need a run to stay alive, two to take the lead. The wind-up by Walter Johnson and the pitch to the one for three, Cecil Cooper, is swung on by Cooper, and that is a fly ball to left. Coming on is Goose Goslin, and he's got it for out number one. Ryan Braun is two for three with a double and a run scored. He's up there now. Walter Johnson winds up and delivers to Brawny, and he walked him. Johnson walks the potential tying run. He's at first base now, and here is Jeff Jenkins, and we're going to get a runner for Braun. And that is going to be... Carlos Gomez. So Gomez runs for Braun at first base. And he is a threat to steal as well as a guy who can score from first on a double. So we will check Gabby Hartnett's throwing arm. Uh, and that is a three. I don't know if they want to send him. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I think they are. I think they are. Jenkins at the plate. Gomez working on his lead. The pitch from Johnson. Jenkins takes. And there goes Carlos Gomez. The throw down from Hartnett to the shortstop. Rogers Hornsby is not in time. And it might be an error. Did Gabby Hartnett launch this one into center field? Let's see. Hartnett's error rating is a four. Uh, 36 or better, he does not throw it into center field. It's blocked by Hornsby. Nice play by Rogers Hornsby. But Gomez does steal second. He's in scoring position with one out. Jenkins still at the plate. Battling Walter Johnson. The stretch. Jenkins is one for three. Burnett's on deck. The stretch and the delivery by the big train is going to be a base hit for Jenkins. Are you kidding me? This is going to be into right field. Around third comes Gomez. He's going to score. Babe Ruth's throw comes into second. We're all tied up. Yikes. Well, that's going to do it for Johnson. Burnitz comes to the plate. Carl Mays is coming on to take over the pitching duties. So Johnson goes eight and a third innings. What a ball game. My goodness. Johnson gives up six hits, walks two, including the big walk to Braun in the ninth. He strikes out 11 and allows three runs. They're all earned, and Jenkins... The potential go-ahead run 
is at first base. We might get another runner. Uh, Burnitz comes to the plate. Now, Carl Mays, kind of a sidearm submariner, and, of course, uh, killed Ray Chapman with a wild pitch in 1920. Uh, uh, but he's on to face Burnitz. And... Jenkins is going to run for himself. All right. One out, one on. Simmons on deck. Mays, 16 and 10 with a 292 ERA. We are tied at three with one out in the top of the ninth and a man at first. The stretch by Mays and the delivery is a base hit for Burnett. This will go to left field. Stopping in front uh, with the play in front of him is Jenkins. He will stop at second. Two are on with one out now for Simmons. The Brewers rallying here in the ninth inning. Mays trying to work out of it. Uh, no more running. So we had first and second. Not going to use these pinch runners. Simmons at the plate. He's one for two. Mays the stretch. The go-ahead run is at second base. The stretch by Mays and the delivery to Simba is a swung on and it's hit to right that's babe ruth he's got it for out number two and holding at second is jenkins now gorman thomas maze the stretch the pitch to gorman is swung on and bounced to short that's hornsby he's going to go the short way to grant them covering and the Brewers are retired in the ninth, but they get a run and tie the game on two hits. They leave two. Say it with me. Oh, those bases on balls. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Fingers coming back out, looking for redemption. We go to the bottom of the ninth with your score. The Brewers three and the 20s three, and Raleigh's got a face. Ruth Hartnett and Stevenson or a pinch hitter. The meat of the 20s order. The wind-up by fingers and the pitch to the Sultan of Swat is a base hit for Ruth. This goes to left field, drops in front of Jenkins. There's the winning run. Any old kind of a run is going to win it for the 20s. Now it's Gabby Hartnett. A lot of options here. You could have Gabby lay one down if you want to. The stretch and the delivery by fingers. Gabby Hartnett is bunting. He gets it down. It's bunted back to two fingers. He gloves it and throws to first where Gantner is covering. One down. Ruth moves to a scoring position. Riggs Stevenson is due. He is being called back to the bench. The pinch hitter is going to be uh, Zach Wheat, the Brooklyn Robins. Outfielder, star of their World Series team in 1920. He is going to bat for Stevenson here in the ninth. And into the on-deck circle to bat for Lazari is uh, Sam Rice. So they're going to take two shots here. And try and score the winning run. Oh, wait. Do they have another third baseman? They might be out of infielders. Uh, well, let's see. Nope. They got Goose Goslin they can bring in to play third. So they're okay. Zach Wheat is up there. Fingers with Ruth at second. The stretch. The pitch to Zach Wheat. Is a rip for a base hit. It gets into the gap. Around third comes Ruth. He will score. And it's a 4-3 walk-off winner for the 1920s on a pinch hit single by Zach Wheat. My goodness. A big comeback in the last two innings by the 20s. Let's give you the totals on this one. What a ball game. This is such a fun set. Unbelievable. For the homestanding and victorious 1920s, four runs. 
10, 12, 14 base hits. They could have scored a lot more than that. And they committed one error. For the Brewers, three runs. The visiting and vanquished Milwaukee Brewers, seven base hits, and they committed one error. The winning pitcher is Carl Mays. The loss goes to Raleigh Fingers. The star of the game. Boy, well, it could be Johnson, but I'm going to go Zach Wheat for the pinch hit walk-off winner uh, in the bottom of the ninth. Scoring Ruth, who's another candidate for player of the game, but I'll give it to Wheat. Uh, so... Wow, this was a game, my goodness. Uh, in the description for this video is the link to Sideline Strategies website. That's where you find all of the payoff pitch goodness. Uh, the legends and busts and all the game stuff, PDFs, cards, whatever you need. Sideline Strategies website is there in the description for this video, as is the link to channel membership. With channel membership to my channel, you get access to members-only videos, book reviews, playing tips, uh, exclusive replays, all sorts of stuff, special reports. Uh, you also get discounts in my secondary store, $10 off per set, $2 off per team, and you get a free gift from me every month. So that's a great value as well. Check that out. It's in the description for this video. But for now, from Rick Woodfield, your final, the 1920 Stars and Bus 4 and the All-Time Brewers 3. Have a great evening. So long, everybody.